Chris Bosch, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. This is amazing for me because, you know, I, I didn't grow up watching basketball, but then obviously basketball became a big part of my life as the game expanded around the globe. And inevitably, if you love the game at some point, Chris Bosch is gonna be somebody that you were watching. You know, with the big three at the Miami Heat, you were part of history in basketball. And today we're here to talk about you writing about that history. It's a book that I think is in some parts uh, self, it's a memoir. You know, in other parts of the book, it feels like it's a, it's a, it's an inspirational self-help book. And then on the other side, it feels like it's a, it's a behind the scenes of everything basketball. Tell me why you decided, you know what, as Chris Bosch, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to bear my all. Well, I mean, it's, it's two different things, right? Um, from the moment I was born and, and from the moment I could understand what it was, all I wanted to do was play basketball. Uh, it gave me friends, mentors fun, you know, all the highs and lows. That's how I did everything. That's how I identified uh, myself as the person. And, and as I continued to go, I started to understand that there were so many valuable lessons that I learned um, on my way to the top. Right. And then getting to the top and losing it so quickly, there were more lessons after that. And at the mm -hmm. end of the day, we all have that inner voice inside of us, right? That are That are telling us, that we can do things or we can't do things. I just right. wanted to let people know, right, that it's normal. I wanted to let people know my experience, most importantly. And look, I come from a reality to where I was shooting basketball in a trash can. That's how I shot hoops on a Saturday for an extended right. amount of time. You know, so to go from that dream um, and, and just thinking it and believing every day and having those people give me advice, give me help, giving me a hot meal, just just understanding that helping a young child yeah, uh, realize definitely. their dream, just in the short moment, you know, you'd be amazed what it could do. So I wanted to kind of tie all of those things in and at the same time, give people, um, um, you know, like you were saying, behind the scenes, those things are interesting because it is kind of behind the scenes because we were living these things out in real time. Right. We're trying to figure it out on the fly right, right, as right, we're right. trying to compete. What I loved about this book is it almost speaks to the current moment through the lens of basketball because for those who don't know, Chris Bosh was at the top of his game. NBA champion, you were dominating with one of the most fearsome big three we've ever seen in our lives. And then like that, your doctor said, hey, Chris, you cannot play this game anymore because you may lose your life. Tell us a little bit about what it was like to hear that, how hard it was you, for you to believe and understand that and go through the stages of grief, and then what you learned post that. It, it was very difficult. I mean, you know, like I told you before, basketball was everything for me. So to hear the fact that I can't play anymore at a time when I'm trying to redefine myself uh, as one of the top players in the world, mm -hmm. it just couldn't be. At that time, it just couldn't be. But one thing I, I learned through basketball is that you have to keep going, regardless of the circumstance. We can't control what happens to us, right? Mm -hmm. Th those are things that are out of our control. But what I can control is, is what my reaction is going to be to that environment. Definitely. How I'm going to get up the next day and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going to happen but I know it's going to be okay because now I'm going to put the shift to something else. And, and that is difficult, right? I think right. we're all in a mode where we have to find that next thing. Me writing this book was actually me eating my own words and my coach's words again <laughs> and <laughs> trying that. to find out what that. I'm going to do after basketball. And, and that's always not an easy journey. So I wanted, again, I wanted to bring those lessons, those stories, because as you read this book, consider it your inner voice, because uh -huh. this is me talking to you, because I am trying to figure this thing out. This is a guy freshly retired and not knowing what he's doing right. in this book, you know? So I want people to understand that. Um, um, I was trying to figure it out just like everybody else, and I still am. We talk about mental health in the world, but a lot of the time I feel like we don't think if athletes have any type of mental health issues or have to deal with anything or even have the right to. We just go like, yo, man, dunk the ball, throw the ball, catch the ball, just do the thing with the ball. That's all we're looking for. 
And recently, we've been forced to have more of those conversations. As Chris Bosch, you seem like you've transitioned well. You seem like you, you found a peace and a zen. And I'd love to know how you've done that because I know you've had challenges. So I'd love to know what you've worked on that has helped you as Chris Bosch to not lose, I guess, your joy for life as a whole. I, I think one of the things that we all put pressure, you know, society puts pressure on us and we put pressure on ourselves is to know what's coming next, right? Mm. That's not necessarily the point, right? We're all human and we all go through human transitions and going through grief is definitely uh, uh, one of those stages. But, you know, for me, what helped me is to realize where I am. And granted, that's not to say that I didn't go through struggles. I went through tremendous struggles. I went through pretty much a midlife crisis when I'm not midway through my life. And I had to, I had to really just hunker down and figure out what do I love? Right. And, and then I went from there. And one thing that I do love is my kids, Jackson, Trinity, Dylan, Phoenix, Lennox, love you guys. I had to make sure that I, I, I am a father to them. Right. And make sure that I'm taking them to school, make sure I'm a, I'm paying attention to their wants, their thoughts, their feelings. Mm -hmm. And then really, I just built from there. So the best part about it was I realized through this self-discovery and really I had to learn about myself because I don't know anything. I've only played basketball. I love I, I learned that I love writing. And That's so beautiful, man. Yeah. Once I saw that, it just I just fed the beast until a book came out, you know, and it was it, it was a long way. It was a three and a half year process, but right. at the end of the day, I'm happy to be here and share my story. That's beautiful, man. I love, I love that. It's find, finding a new passion. You realigning your passion and aiming it in a different place. I, I, I really like that. I'm, I'm assuming you still love basketball. You watch the game, right? Of course, hey, okay. every day. Okay. Are you, are you putting your money on anybody? Is there anybody where you just look at the field and you go, you know what? I think they have the best shot. You know, man, it's, it's wide open. That's the best part about um, this year. If I were to root for someone, I'm going to root for uh, Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns and Monty okay. Williams. Okay. And James Yeah, and Devin Jones, Booker was amazing guy. in L.A., yeah. Absolutely. My guy Champ at the helm at the GM. I, I would want them. I I'm rooting for them. I want to see them win. Phoenix, they have been clamoring for a championship for a long time. So to see them have an extended playoff run and maybe even get one, uh, you know, that if, if I were to vote, that's who I'd vote for. Well, your vote goes a long way. Uh, I will say, man, this has been a wonderful experience for me, not because, not only because I admire you so much as a player, but because I've loved the positivity and the message that you've put out into the world post your NBA career. I think you're still a superstar. I think you'll always be a superstar. Chris Bosch, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thanks a lot for having me, man. I appreciate you.